Okay, so um, this week's lectures are still focused on the tools we use to reject climate change, but more focused on the adaptation strategies uh, that can come from looking at those projections. Uh, so looking at the UK climate uh, projections from 2009, which have these high resolution projections for 25 kilometer squares across the UK. And lecture 10 in particular looks at how those um, products, how that information could be used to inform policies, the kind of steps that you could go through if you were um, a town planner and you knew that uh, through looking at that data and looking at the thresholds that you were going to get more summers where the tarmac melted, for instance, on your roads, which would be a very bad thing in terms of transport links and, and road efficiency. And so if you identified that uh, in in the future, so in future decades, that was going to happen much more often with your roads, then you could look at um, different materials, perhaps, in terms of things which would be more resistant to these higher summer temperatures than you would experience in the past. They might be more costly, you might have to look at what's used, say, in southern Europe compared to the UK, um, and so put that into place now so that when we hit those higher temperatures um, in decades to come, you don't have the negative impacts. So that's the kind of theme of Lecture 10. Um, that's followed by a review of the previous five lectures as we have throughout the course, um, really pulling out the, the take-home messages, the main um, points I want you to get from those lectures. The main test, and this is where I'm looking for um, some feedback from you on how you find it, is having looked at those first ten lectures, and particularly the latest five, the, the climate projection um, information, but also the, the strategies you can use as a, as a practitioner to say, okay, I've got all this climate projection information, but how do I actually use it? Is it useful to me? How can I make my, my business more resilient, my community more resilient? Those really important questions of tackling climate change through adaptation. An example we've got um, as part of the course is, is um, the, the walk through the, the role playing um, labyrinth that we've created. And as you'll see when you go into it, the scenario is all about um, schools. And it's based on a real life um, event uh, which has been experienced in the UK. So again, we're focused on the UK here because of the, the projections we've got, the adaptation strategies. But always bear in the back of your mind some of the key lessons um, apply wherever you are in terms of adaptation. But the background is very hot summers. Um, and we have had them amazingly in the UK and hot for us is, is something over 30 degrees in the summer. That's, that's a pretty hot summer's day. And what was found with some new state-of-the-art schools in the south of England, uh, which had only uh, opened a few years previously, that they were maladapted to these very high summer temperatures. Um, temperatures in the classrooms were reaching above 32 degrees, which is seen as the threshold beyond which you start getting uh, real heat stress with the pupils and with the staff and it basically becomes untenable to, to carry on teaching. This event happened in these schools. These were, like I say, new schools. Um, so in terms of uh, them being replaced the following year with new buildings, that wasn't a very tenable short-term option. So what the scenario sets you up with is this case where you've got this, um, this new school and you, you're faced with projections through the, the weather generator part of the UK climate projection uh, tool set that we've talked about in previous lectures. And it tells you that it's likely you'll cross that 32 degrees threshold um, several times each summer in future years. So that's going to put your staff and your pupils at risk. And the labyrinth is set up so you take on three different roles and you can take them in any order you want, but try and do all three. One is a classroom teacher. So you've got this information that you know, there is going to be more risk in terms of heat stress for your pupils. Um, but you're a classroom teacher. It's not like you can make um, real top level decisions all by yourself in terms of the whole school, but you've got control and actually responsibility for the comfort of your pupils. So what kind of decisions could you make based on that information and using the adaptation tools provided by UK climate impacts program. So what kind of things can you do that are temporary measures? What kind of things 
can you do which are more strategic so in terms of planning uh, say the, the timetable for your classes um, and basically the um, the role play takes you through those those different categories of adaptation response and gives you different options under them so you might choose to do nothing and just live with the heat impacts and see what the result of that might be you might decide to do something like um, put blinds up to reduce the amount of heating from sunlight coming through the windows those kind of uh, responses are in there and what I want you to do is go through with all the knowledge you've got and make those decisions that are offered to you to see what the result is and then dwell a little bit on other options that you might take which aren't represented there other things that you think you might do as a classroom teacher which would be more effective um, and do include them so there's a discussion board linked to the labyrinth um, and it'd be really nice to see your ideas and actually um, if you're happy with it I'll probably take some of them and incorporate them into the role play so we get more options more strategies which might be effective in the short term or longer term. The classroom teacher is just one of the, the, the roles you play in this exercise the other two are the head teacher, so you've got control over the whole school, and so you've got much more you can do in terms of whole school impacts and, and maybe long term strategy. And the other role is head of education. So in the UK, our director of education um, essentially has control over all the schools in a particular county or um, borough. And so they'll have several schools, uh, possibly dozens in, um, in the southeast, that they're making decisions for. So if they're presented with this information that it's going to get hotter in the summers, there's going to be higher peak temperatures, the students, the staff might be at risk, what decisions would you take? And obviously depending on that role, so depending on your, your, your I guess, power to initiate change, what you decide to do will probably change and obviously the level you act at will also be different. So considering those three roles, go through them, each of them, and look again at the, the suggestions which are put forward as adaptation strategies. Choose the one you think is most appropriate. Have a look at the outcome. Maybe look at some of the others who are not doing anything. What would the implication of that be? And again, if you've got good alternatives, other ideas about how, given that climate information, that projection of hotter uh, summers, what you could do to make the school the children, the staff, more resilient in the future, then then do feed it back, put it in the um, uh, the message board, let's discuss it online as well, um, and hopefully we can actually improve this exercise, um, but hopefully also uh, you'll enjoy some of the scenarios, and um, yeah, test some of the, the things that you've been learning in the last few weeks. Okay, looking forward to seeing you all later.